Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be the importance of sharing the same values. I've got an email. This is from a guy. He says he's read my first book, 3% Man, I guess over a dozen times. He said over the, like, the past three years, he's read about a dozen times. And then probably within the first year after he got real familiar with his my work, he met his now, or actually now ex-girlfriend, and things were pretty great during the lockdowns, but he said in 2021, they started hanging out with their friends again, because obviously with the lockdowns, they weren't able to see the people that were close to them very much. Well, he walked in on her at a party with one of her friends, and she had a, uh, a little white powder problem. <laughs> so he wasn't happy about this. Then she said she'd been doing it like 12 years. It was no big deal. And then he, she said, she, you know, she wasn't going to do it again. He catches her a few weeks later doing it again, breaks up with her. She begs him to come back a few weeks later. He, They go out, they hang out, they have fun, they hook up. And now she was telling him. So it's interesting. It's like he's kind of – because you got to set and enforce healthy boundaries and he's – and it reminds me because I had this situation with a, a girlfriend of mine in the past many years ago. And, you know, that's just something I have no interest in. People that do regular drugs and stuff like that. It's like I might drink. I might smoke a little bit every now and then. But I'm not touching anything else. And I didn't want to hang out with – I didn't want to have a girlfriend at the time that was like, like the white stuff. And because it's just – I had lots of friends, especially when I was in the mortgage and real estate industry. I remember we had this account executive that – used to come in and and he was always high as a kite and he was always like that he made a lot of money but he spent a lot of it on the white powder stuff and i was just like i just told her i I'm, if that's who you are and you're gonna do that then i'm out i'm not interested in that and she quit she quit doing it so but in this particular case, he told her, hey, I'm not down with that. And then she went ahead and did it anyways. And so what's interesting is she's trying to get him to, you can see, she's trying to get him to compromise. And this is the important thing as a man, when you draw a line in the sand and you set and enforce healthy boundaries, women are going to test that, especially if they get the sense that you're not congruent with that and you don't really believe it and you don't really mean it. They're going to try 50 different approaches to try to fly under the radar and get you to compromise and you can see that's what's going on here so the important thing to keep in mind with this email is you got to remember when it comes to negotiation the strongest negotiating position is being able to walk away and mean it and i've got a friend of mine really cool chick and she was with her boyfriend for several years and he just drugs was a problem for him came from a very wealthy family he was born with a silver spoon in his mouth he's kind of the black sheep of the family he's the screw-up and she's together, successful, and many times he say, said he was going to change his behavior and he just never could. And then she eventually broke it off with him for good and walked away, ghosted him and everything. And he tried getting her back for the better part of a year. And he cleaned up his life to a big degree when he realized she wasn't coming back. And so what's interesting is they've, they've been talking. And I've given her my opinion on what I think he's going to do, but it'll be interesting to see what happens because the strongest negotiating position is being able to walk away and mean it. And if somebody really loves you and really values you and appreciates you, it's sometimes because there's very famous cases. There was one in the, um, I think it was Victoria Principal, and it was Andy Gibb in the 1980s, very famous for you know, you Gen X people, that. She gave him an ultimatum because Andy Gibb, famous part of the, you know, one of the BG, um, the band, their, your younger brother who was handsome guy, very talented, and she drew a line in sand and said, hey, you either, it's either me or drugs. He chose drugs and he ended up dying because of them, which was sad, but it happens. And you, you might come, you might have to deal with something like this in your life or you might deal with somebody that's stealing from you or lying to you. And at the end of the day, you have to set and enforce healthy boundaries because if you just allow people that continually violate your boundaries to stay in your life, you're, you're inviting more of that, not just from them, but you'll invite that behavior from other people. So it's important 
to be consistent with everyone in your life about these things. You got to hold people accountable. Otherwise, they're going to walk all over you. So I got a quote that I wrote, and then we'll go through his email. <clears throat> the quote says, your inner circle should consist of people who share the same goals and values. Allowing people into your inner circle who don't share the same goals and values leads to you having to compromise your value system. We typically become like the people who we spend most of our time with. In life, you got to find your tribe of like-minded people who inspire you to grow and become more. Whatever you tolerate in life, you invite more of. You are who you associate with. Choose wisely. So let's see what happened here. He says, hi, coach. I read your book at least a dozen times over three years, and I was going out with my girlfriend for over a year. Everything was going great. We were unable to hang out with most of our friends in 2021, but we traveled together a lot. However, we started hanging out more with our friends lately. At a party one night, <laughs> I walked in on her indulging in a behavior that Scarface would highly approve of. And there was a there was a scene in the movie where Scarface he had he had basically had cocaine all over in his face. It was pretty funny. Just see, <laughs> that's not something you want to find out that your girlfriend. I guess they were probably together close to three years or maybe longer that she was into this because she's always been into it. Just she never told him. And you'll see as we get further in the email what she says about that. He says I was blindsided. She never told me this was something she actively participates in. Well, it was a need-to-know basis, and obviously, you didn't need to know. I told her I was upset with what I witnessed, and she confessed that she's been doing it for 12 years, but it's no big deal. Yeah. And she never told me because she feared judgment and knew I wouldn't like it. Duh. My trust was broken. I asked if she was hiding any other behaviors, although she said no. Trust is the hardest thing to get and the easiest thing to lose. This guy's been with her for several years. It sounds like he got serious right before all the lockdowns happened. And so he didn't really get a chance to know her and what her peer group was like and the kind of things she really did for fun just because they weren't able to see each other and he wasn't able to interact. This just goes to show the importance of taking your time to get to know somebody before you move in with them, before you get married, instead of just rushing into a relationship. Because you don't know what you don't know. Right before another big party, we had a talk where I told her I wouldn't be comfortable if what happened at the previous party happens again. I told her I don't see a future together if that particular behavior continues. Yeah, I told my girlfriend at the time, I was just like, I'm just not down with this stuff. We smoke or drink, but that shit, I am not touching that. And I don't want it around me. And if you're doing that, then I'm out. I don't want to be with a girl that's doing that shit. Because the other thing with cocaine is it makes you horny. It makes you do stupid things. And a lot of girls give up the poussoir for a little blow. And girls that are doing that are typically being very promiscuous. So thanks, but no thanks. She told me I mean more to her than anything, but couldn't promise anything because she may slip up in the future. In other words, she's just basically saying, yeah, I'm going to do it again in the future. That's what she's basically saying by that statement. I told her I wouldn't know how to react if she does slip up, which basically told her you were, you know, go ahead and do it again. Ultimately, she did slip up at a party and I caught her trying to hide it. I broke up with her the following day. Two weeks later, she called saying she's sorry and wanted me back. I just responded saying we should talk over dinner. We then hooked up. The following morning, she said, now that we're back together... I don't want to live in fear that you'll break up with me like that again. <laughs> he says, I responded, I never said we're getting back together. Days later, she called wanting to work. Remember, the strongest negotiating position is being able to walk away and mean it. So what you're seeing right here, he's setting a boundary and then he's kind of trying to enforce it. But you could tell just like a little child, she's trying to see if she can get away with it. I responded saying, I'd only consider working on things if you committed to giving up the white lines. It would promise not to hide anything or lie like this again. Well, number one, she she hid the drug issue from him. And number two, she lied, which obviously he didn't like that. Those are major character issues. 
Because if she lies about the little things, what other things is she lying about? It seemed like she was in agreement. However, a few days later, she called saying she ultimately didn't agree and I shouldn't want her to not do something. (laughs) She really likes the white lines. I should just accept her for who she is and she didn't want to live in fear that if she's not perfect enough for me, I would break up with her again. So what she's doing is she's challenging him. How congruent are you with the fact that he didn't want her doing cocaine? That's what she's really tested him because she thinks she's got the impression and the vibe that there's some wiggle room there that he'll just cave and it'll blow over and it won't be a big deal. Women are clever. They're going to come at you with 50 different ways. Just, just think because they – they respected the boundary the first time doesn't mean they're going to try 50 different ways to slide under the radar next time he says i just responded with i've always loved you if you change your mind give me a call while i've been back to dating others lately if she does change her mind and reach out should i believe her well i would say based on her behavior and her reaction she's going to continue to try to get you to go back on your word and this is really you have to be consistent 100 percent of the time you can't be consistent 10 times and then let her slip up once and then because then it just communicates that she can keep getting away with it and you're a softy and you'll just cave. Can I can trust be regained with someone who hides things? Well, it really depends on how much of a liar they really are. Does she lie about all kinds of things? I would say probably not. One little thing, if it was strictly, it was just this one thing she didn't tell you. It's how much does she respect and value you and love you and appreciate you? How much leverage do you have in the relationship? Who's got the position of leverage? Are you more into her or is she more into you? And if she feels, the important thing being feel, she feels that you're more into her than she is into you, she's going to believe she can walk all over you and get away with it. So if she does come back, then she's got to commit and come right out and say, You're, I will promise I will never do it again. I'm done with that. I won't even hang out with those people anymore. Because if she says she'll never do it again and then keeps hanging out with the same people she's always done cocaine with, and as Rick James said, cocaine is a hell of a drug, then if she keeps hanging out, you are who you associate with. If she keeps hanging out with the people that do the drugs – then you know how peer pressure, oh, come on, just one line. Oh, just don't tell your boyfriend. If you don't tell him, he'll never know. And then she'll probably do drugs again. But if she stops hanging out with that group of friends that does that stuff, and that would be evidence that potentially you can trust her. But you got to see see how, how it is 90 days, a year from now, because she might just be waiting in, until she thinks she's got you again. And then she'll she'll slip up. But if she's hanging out with a bunch of party people that like to do drugs and ecstasy and all those other things, and that's who she is. You are who you associate with. If those are your people, if that's your tribe, then don't be surprised if she does it again. If she just distances herself from all those people that she was doing that stuff with and doesn't hang out with them anymore, then you can probably believe her. But like I said... You got to look at what she does, not what she says. And what do I think? You know, it's a 50-50 shot. Flip a coin. It could go either way. You can't really tell. You can only tell based on her actions. But if we look at her responses here, she really doesn't want to give up the drugs. She really doesn't. So that, that should tell you what her intent is. So her intent more than likely is going to be, I'll just deceive him and he'll never know. I mean, she even came right out and said, well, I never told you about it because I know you would judge me and you wouldn't like it. So she knows the kind of guy you are and knows that you're not down with that stuff. So her way of dealing, well, I just won't tell him they won't get upset. But as you get into her life and you get into her actual peer group of people who she's used to hanging out with, that seems to be who she is. You are who you associate with. It's just the way it is. So like I said, it, flip a coin, it could go either way. You could give her a wait and see attitude, see that she stops hanging out with those people. And if she can't, then wish her the best and find somebody that shares the same value system because you want a teammate and an equal, not somebody that's a child that's constantly 
trying to see what they can get away with. You always look what people do, not what they say. So if you got a question or a challenge and you'd like to get my help, go to understandingrelationships.com, click the products tab at the top of your screen and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I will talk to you soon.